Welcome in. It is day 169, and you're speaking to the Meeples Champion. And today, we're going over a monster of a game. I mentioned that the other day, me and my friends got together and we played a bunch of games all day long. Well, that was true and it wasn't true. It was true. We did play a bunch of games post our big game. A couple people stayed behind. I played a lot of one-on-one -on -one games and that was what gave me a bunch of ammunition for new games to talk about. But before all of those, I get on my second play of this game and my first play of its fourth edition. We all played Twilight Imperium. And oh my god, what a game. This is a monster. We planned by getting together for 9 a.m., hoping to be done for one because we had played the third edition in the past and thought we'd be a little bit quicker. But with our range being, it could take as late as 4 p.m. We finished at 3.47, and we had a blast the whole way. Now, I have played long day games before. In my old game group, we had played Axis and Allies once a year. Every year, it took us over 12, sometimes as long as 14 hours. We never finished the game. and We all found out that all of us had been done and wanted to quit the game five hours earlier, but didn't want to ruin it for everybody else every year. So it was fun, but it was only fun for so long, and eventually it was exhausting and it felt like work. This never has that issue. This game is just so much fun, whether it's seeing what the new objectives are coming out, getting your new secret missions, trying to negotiate with the people next to you, finding a way to get trade routes to the people who are across from you, having your space battles, protecting you know, the Mechatol Rex, going after uh, certain resources, trying to buy more fleet, trying to buy more protection for your planet. There is so much to do. In the game that we played, I shot out to a lead. I was the person who was basically an expert when it came to trade, so I was getting money like a maniac. So in a game that goes until 10 points and you're done, or until you've gone, I believe it's nine rounds and then you're done, we were literally in round two or three. I, I think it was two and I hit four points. And by rounds three or four, I hit six points. And I was killing it. Unfortunately, I was killing it way too much and everybody cut me off and I basically got just extricated. You know, I was eliminated for the rest of the game. I did manage a second place. I got to nine points, but I really hamstrung myself because I gave myself too much of a lead and caused everybody at the table to cut me off for about two rounds from all trade and have them kind of push in on my borders. So it's a game that you have to learn a little bit about. How good do you want to be? How long do you want to be that good? You have to be careful. So I think that it's, it's a game that it's definitely not for a light gamer. But at the same time, a light gamer who's, who's a fan of games, they just don't play a lot, can play this game. I wouldn't recommend to somebody who says, oh, I play games like, you know, 10, 15 times a year to go and play Axis and Allies. I would say absolutely not. You need to be either a war gamer or you need to be playing games every weekend. But if somebody's playing games 10 to 15 times a year, so they, they play games, just not a lot, I would definitely say if they came to me and they said i'm kind of interested in playing twilight imperium but i'm not sure i'd say do it take the shot because you're not going to hate the day unless you just genuinely cannot stand this style game but if the game looks intriguing to you you're going to have fun even if you get destroyed and that's what's great about this game you can enjoy it even if you're last place it is just a really fun day and it's about the people you're playing with because you're committing to a full day of Hey, we're going to get together early. We're going to grab some food. We're going to get some drinks. We're going to make sure we have stuff to like, take our little breaks during it. We're going to be you know, talking about life. We're going to be catching up as friends. It's more than just the game. It's the whole experience of that day. So for me, I think it's highly recommended. But with that being said, why don't we jump into our seven categories and really see where this game falls for us. When it comes to the art, I mean, who here has gone into a board game store, seen this box, and not had their eyes go wide? I didn't know what it was for years. I would hear a friend be like, oh, we're going to you know this person's place. They're just finishing up their Twilight Imperium game for the day. We're playing the later in the day games. And I'd be like, ooh, 
I've always felt like seen Twilight. Well, what's Twilight Imperium? Like, it seems interesting. And it, and it would seem almost a little overwhelming. Now, back in those days was the second edition. I've only played the third and the fourth. I was told the first edition was a mess, and I assume the second edition was much better, but probably still just a little overwhelming to see and not know what you're looking at. Whereas I feel like the third was not too overwhelming to look at, and the fourth was definitely one where I was like, there's not too much here. I didn't feel like they were just washing over me with confusion. So I think that the box sells you and brings you in. I think that the board and the pieces, all of that sells you the feel. It's a huge thumbs up on that art. Comes to those components, we're going right back into it. They're doing a fourth edition on a game. They're not going to skimp. You know, I guarantee you one day there'll be a fifth edition on this because it's just that popular. These components are top of the line. You're talking about hundreds of minis for the ships, for your people who are going onto the planets, for your your space docks and your and your PDSs. You're talking about loads of cards when it comes to the cards you're collecting for your secret missions, the cards for your planetoids. You're talking about all of the money that you're getting in your little cardboard chips. They do a really good job, not to mention the board, which isn't even a board. It is hexagons. So we set up what they said was the easiest setup for a four-player game. But there are options for five and six-player setups. There are options for much different setups that can make it so that it's a harder game or just randomizing at which point who knows what's going to happen because you might end up being completely surrounded by loads and loads of red planets and you're just like well i guess i'm going to get a lot of red or you can end up being stuck between a couple of the asteroid fields and having the the, the sun near you and being like well i don't have a lot near me but it's going to be hard to get to me it's really cool in that regard i love their components Thumbs up. Your price. Now, this game is not cheap. I would be shocked. I think the lot, the lowest I've ever seen this game, and I guarantee you, the one I, I can't remember which edition it was, but whatever edition I saw must have been the previous edition to whichever one was out at the time. But it was $90 brand new in a store. That was the cheapest. Usually, $100 is the min. And you're looking at more like 120. I think this game can go even higher than that. It's possible this game goes as high as 150. Probably when it first hits the shelves, and you're looking at, oh, okay, this game's you know the fourth edition for the next six months is 150. The third edition is probably now at its you know 90 to 100 range, and then eventually they both kind of meet each other, and you go, okay, this is dropping to the 120 average, and that's going to kind of stay at its hundred. So. I think it's very, very pricey. At the same time, what are you getting for that price? You're getting a monster of a game, and it's fabulous. So the question is, how can I recommend that the price is acceptable? This is how. As of right now, I have a group of five that get together every Monday for board games. Of those five, one of us owns both the third and the fourth edition. He's a big fan. As a result, there was no need for anybody else in that group to get it unless they have other people they would play it with. And even then, you can borrow from that person. I would love to own this game. This is a game I would definitely put on my must-buy list if I felt I was playing it enough. But even if I had my family and my wife's family and another group of friends all say they'd like to play, I'm not playing with most likely this game more than at the very most twice a year. It's a big commitment. Back when I used to live with all of my sisters and my parents, yes. If I had three sisters say, we'll play with you, and they liked it, then I would have bought it because I could have had a shot at playing it any weekend of the year, because we all live there. But we don't anymore. I live with my wife and my young daughter. My daughter's two and a half. She's not touching this game until she's minimum 10, and we'll see if hopefully she's the gamer fan by then. So it's my wife, who I do think if she gave it a try would like it, but as of right now, she has no idea what it is. And two people aren't playing this game. You need four. So we have to have two more people minimum, agree to come stay at the house. Hopefully they don't have a kid. Hopefully we can find somebody to watch our kid to be able to commit seven, eight, nine hours to this game. It's too much. It's just too much time. So it doesn't make sense for me to buy it. But if I was in the same group and I had the group of friends I knew liked playing games and we liked it and nobody owned it, I would buy it. 
I think that for the people who say we have somebody to play with and nobody in the group owns it yet, it is worth its money. And for that reason, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. You just have to judge when it's the right time to spend. I've given plenty of games thumbs ups for price. And that doesn't mean I say buy it every time. If somebody were to go off and buy Azul, but they play Azul only with their spouse and with three, their, their three people they play games with, and the three people they play games with all own Azul, I'd be like, just borrow Azul to play with your wife, unless it's a commonly played game, even though I think the price is acceptable. So it's the same thing with this. You just have to judge your situation. But as far as what you're getting for that price, you're getting your money's worth. Your difficulty. How difficult is it? Well, I don't think the rule book is that bad. So that's a good start because a game of this size is always a question on the rule book. I don't think that the setup is bad. It does take some time. We made sure that the guy who owned the, the game showed up to my house 30 minutes beforehand and the two of us did the setup and we literally just finished at nine o'clock. So a two person team set this game up in 30 minutes. It's, it's not an easy setup, but it's not horrendous. And again, if you're a big player of this, some people only play one or two or three games. So you might be the type of household that says, oh, we love to play this game. We have a gaming table in our basement and we leave it set up all the time. Or we've played it so much, we've mastered the setup. And we don't have to look for the numbers and check the rule book. We know where every single tile goes because we memorized it at this point. Not because we tried to, but because we just know it now. So there's a way that I could see somebody grabbing this game and setting it up in like 15 minutes by themselves. But it is a bit of a setup. That being said, I don't think it adds to the difficulty. So let's get away from that and get to the game. What's the game? You have to judge your, basically your commerce. You're, you're going to get in stuff that you can use for trade to then turn it into your, your trading goods. Your trading goods can represent the yellow and the blue that are the two different types of things you can spend on your cards. So basically when you have to buy something and it costs yellow or it costs the blue cost, your trade goods can fill in for either of them and be a wild. You are trying to expand and move out your ships. You have to use your markers from your tactical and your strategy. Tactical to move on the board so you drop it on a space you're activating, which means you can move people to the space and anything in the space you can activate. So if you have a space dock, you can drop it there and say, okay, I'm using my space dock to build, and I'm also moving these ships in. You can't move out. And then use your strategy so that whenever somebody uses an ability and it has a secondary ability, usually a secondary ability is activated by you giving up a strategy token. So you do these things, and this is your basics. You're also keep, keeping attention to trying to make sure who's attacking who, are you going to the center for Mech Tall Rex, which is a victory point for the first person to conquer it? Are you making sure to collect and try to get your, your max of one secret agenda done each turn, which is a victory point? Are you trying to, at the end of each turn, complete the revealed agenda that's out there for you to all go after, as you can only do one of those a turn? And whenever you get 10 points, you win. Or if nobody does, when the ninth round ends, highest point value wins. I think that the difficulty is really about the strategy. When we were playing, I didn't feel like any of us was lost. I didn't feel like any of us didn't know what they were doing. I didn't feel like any of us was in question of like, why can't I win? We all saw what was our issue and it was having to find a way to overcome it. And I think that we all did a good job at that. Now we're regular gamers, but this is meant for a, a regular gamer. This is meant for somebody who's playing at least once a week, every week. I have played a board game on average, at least one game a week for probably about almost 15 years. Now, if you were to go to certain years of that, there was like a three or four year crunch area where I was playing an average of a game a night. But I'm older. I have, you know, tighter schedules for availability and a kid. So I can't play as often as I used to. But I still have a night I go every week and play a game. And that's just the game group. Never mind when my wife or my family has availability. We have those weeks where I'm playing games all the time. So for me, I think that this is definitely a highly big thumbs up on the difficulty. It's learnable. It's not too hard to learn. And it's really fun to play.
replayability. Ah, I really wanted to give this one seven thumbs up. I really did. But you are never playing this back to back in the same day. It's not going to happen. It is so long and as much fun as I had. And trust me, if I had no job, if I had nobody I had to take care of, if I had no responsibilities, and I played this game, and then right after I finished, somebody said, let's play again. Sure, I'd jump right into it. But I don't know many of us who uh, don't have somebody with six to seven zeros behind that number that they have of money in the bank who can do that. We all have jobs. A lot of us have families. A lot of us have friends who have jobs and families. The availability to be able to play this game back to back is extremely limited. So for me, it's not a back to back. It's not once a week. It's not once a month. It's not even once a season. Maybe you can pull this off one to two times a year. And that's not enough for me, so it has to be a thumbs down on the replayability. Your keys to victory. So this is where it's fun. The idea of keys to victory is, yes, the, the plan out keys are, no matter what you're doing on the board, it's about your objectives. Can you get those public objectives? Can you get those secret objectives? Then you have that mix of, well, you have a Mechatol Rex in the center. That's an extra point. All great things. And then there's one additional, which is you have eight different things you're drafting that allow your actions. And one of them says, if you are the one who owns Mechatol Rex and you draft it and it's your turn and you activate the ability, you get a point for being a Mechatol Rex. So that's another one that gets you a permanent point. And then on top of that, what's really cool, Every player has five cards. You can include these during trades with other players. The card basically gives a guarantee to that player of something that you're doing. So you go and you say, okay, I am going to make a, an agreement that I'm not going to have a, I'm going to respect your border. And you're going to get this card. And you can keep it. And I can't break that border agreement unless you break the border agreement. So you're giving them the control to know, I can't attack you, basically, or invade you until you've invaded me. One of these has an agreement where part of the deal is you get a point. Essentially, all the active players have a card that does not count for themselves. But if they trade it to somebody, it's a point for that person. And on top of that, when you trade somebody a card, they can trade the card to another player. So they have the right to take a card and say, okay... I'm going to trade this card over to this person and I'm going to see what I can do with that card. And all of a sudden you go, wow, I didn't realize that I traded my point to player A and they traded it to B and that C traded their card to player D and then player D traded it over to player, C, to player B. And then all of a sudden when I'm trading with player B and I end up getting a hold of player D's card, I do an exchange for their card and now they have three victory points and I had no idea. I mean, well, I guess actually all other cards that means the only ones that don't are the victory points is you do have to show them. So apologies, that's the only thing that I'm wrong about. But it's a really cool aspect and having that in the game really amps up these keys to victory because it's all about trading attacking, trying to balance it out. You know, I made the mistake of being too strong too early and it cost me all of my allies wanting to attack me and really stop trading with me. And even though I was close to a win, I didn't get it because I just stepped a little too far ahead of them and got cut off. At one point, it was like a, a somebody was two points, two people were three points and I was six. And they all just cut me off for like two whole rounds. They wouldn't trade with me. They wouldn't, they, you know, they all got on my borders and they really hampered on me and if i attacked one i was afraid of making it so that the others could really mess me up it was a difficult thing to work with so for me i really like those keys to victory because there's plenty it's a thumbs up finally is it unique now this is where it gets interesting it is a war game. You're, you're out on there. You're making a space. I mean, you could compare this to Eclipse. It's an upgrading game. You can upgrade your stuff. But I do feel like Eclipse's upgrades are different than these. 
These are just a basic upgrade, whereas they have loads of upgrades for each piece, so they get a lot more into the idea of upgrading fleet. So, but it's still comparable. But then you have the political side. Now, there are other games that do the political side, but the political side in this, there's rule changing. There's the ability to get points because of an all of a sudden revealed agenda. There's the secret ones. And then on top of that, there's the trading and there's the cards you can trade and how you can basically disperse power. I think there are lots of games that touch up against pieces of this, but what this game does is so unique. I have played back in the day the a bunch of these big games. Like I said, I've played three times the Axis and Allies game. I've played twice Eclipse. I really like those games. But I made the decision I really probably won't ever play Axis and Allies again. It just was too long and I never really got a result. I really like Eclipse. I would play that again. But I'm not tempted to go buy it because we have this game. And I feel like this game is so much better than it. And I haven't been tempted for a pure space battle game enough to spend the money that it costs. And I feel like a lot of these huge games, that's what I run into. This game just does what they do better, and it's already in the group. And if it wasn't in the group, and I was told, oh, I really want to play a big game, what should we get? I wouldn't buy Eclipse because I would buy this. It is extremely unique to me. It's a thumbs up. Overall, what do I think? I absolutely love this game. And despite that love, I admit that of my viewers and of the eventual viewers I may get one day, I doubt that more than 15% of you will play it because it's such a difficult game to buy, find somebody who owns it, or just get it to the table because you have the time. That being said, I still highly recommend it, and I never will recommend any of you to go buy it, but I do recommend any opportunity to play. If you're going to PAX East or PAX West, if you're going to Gen Con, if you're going to any of these conventions, look and see if they're offering the ability to go in and have a table to sit down and play this game for the day. And if they are, sign up. If you go to your local board game store, check and see if they own the game and ask them if they allow people to come in and do test plays. Even if they say, oh yeah, you have to pay like, you know, five, 10 bucks for, for a like a room or a table or something, do it. As long as it's not an excessive amount of money that costs, you know, if you get to the point where it's going to cost you half the money of the game, just spend the rest of the money and buy the game. But otherwise, if it's just five, 10, 15 bucks, split it with all the people you want to play and go and play the game and see if you like it. I just think it's a game you should try if you have a chance, because I think everybody, even if it's not a game for you to buy or ever want to play again, you probably will enjoy the experience. That being said, it's up to you to make those decisions. This is a big chunk of time in your life. This may be a game that you go, I'm never going to do that. I don't give more than three hours max, and that's my big game day. So if that's your case, that's fine. Not a worry. Well, it has been day 169, and we have been speaking about Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. And you've been speaking to the Meeples Champion. Like, share, subscribe, and check down below in the description where I'll we'll be adding in an Amazon link in case you want to get this game for your collection. Until next time, I'll talk to you tomorrow.